On Love for God by St. Tikhon of Zadonsk from his book, Journey to Heaven. Beloved Christians, all Christians say, how can we not love God? Or, whom shall we love if not God? This is a true saying. How can we not love God? And likewise, whom shall we love if not God? God is the supreme good, uncreated, without beginning, without end, existent, and without change. As the sun always shines, as fire always warms, so God is by nature good. He is and always does good, since there is none good but one that is God. God even does good when he chastises us, for he chastises us so he may correct us. He strikes us so that he may have mercy on us. He gives us sorrows so that he may truly console us. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. How then can one not love so great a good as God? God is our creator. He created us out of nothing. We were not, and behold, we live, move, and have being. His almighty hands formed and created us. He created us, O men, not like other creatures, senseless and irrational. He created us by his own special divine counsel. Let us make man. Of other creatures it is said, He spake, and they came to be. He commanded, and they were created. But not so with man. What then? Let us, it says, create man. O most holy, O most beloved counsel, the tri-hypostatic God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, said of man, let us create man. What sort of man? In our image, it says, and likeness. O the marvelous goodness of God toward man! O the most exalted honor of man! Man was created by God in the image and likeness of God. On what creature has God bestowed such honor? We know none like it. It was bestowed on man, and he was honored with the image of God. O the most beloved and beautiful of God's creation, man, the image of God. He bears it in himself as a royal seal. As the king is honored, so is his portrait. As to God the heavenly king is due all honor, so to his image man. God poured forth this goodness on us in our creation, O Christian. How then can we not love God? We fell and we perished. We cannot mourn sufficiently over this. And man, being in honor, did not understand. He is compared to the mindless cattle and has become like unto them. But even so, God who loves mankind did not forsake us, but he found a wonderful means for our salvation. He sent us his only begotten Son to save us and to gather us to himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How then shall we not love God, who loves us so? As we call him, God is the lover of mankind then man must be a lover of God, for nothing can be given in return for love but love and gratitude. God is our provider. He takes thought for us and cares for us. He gives us our food, clothing, and home. His sun, moon, and stars give us light. His fire warms us, and we cook our food with it. His water washes us and refreshes us. His beasts serve us. His air enlivens us and keeps us alive. In a word, we are surrounded with his blessings and love, and without them we are not able to live for a moment. Then how can we not love God who loves us so? We love a man who does good. All the more should we love God who does good, whose we are and everything we may possess. All creation, and man himself is God's possession. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. God is our Father. We pray to him and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and so on. How then can we not love God the Father? Good children necessarily love their Father. If then we wish to be true children of God, and unhypocritically call him Father, then we must also love him as Father. Truly is it said by all, How can we not love God? Love, like every other virtue, 
must also reside in our heart. For if love does not reside in the heart, then it does not exist. God does not say, Love, be humble, be compassionate, pray, beseech, call unto me, and so on, to our lips, but to our heart. Then love, humility, compassion, prayer, and the rest must reside in the heart. And if it abides in the heart, then it will inevitably appear outwardly like a belch from stomach. A hidden fire gives itself away by its heat, and a fragrant balm by its smell. Thus David showed the holy love which he had for God by his most sweet hymns to God. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my foundation and my refuge and my deliverer. My God is my helper, and I will hope in him, my defender, and the horn of my salvation and my helper. And in many other places, though love may hide in the heart, nevertheless it cannot be concealed, but it gives itself away by outward signs. But let us see what the signs of love for God are, so that we may not have a false dream of love instead of love itself. In nothing does a man deceive himself so much as in love. The signs of this love are, 1. God himself indicates this, saying, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. For the true lover of God will preserve himself from everything that is repugnant to God, and hastens to fulfill everything that is pleasing to God. Wherefore, he keeps his holy commandments. From this it follows that those Christians that neglect the commandments have no love for God. Such are the malicious, and those that harm others in any way. Such are the profligate, adulterers, and all defilers. Such are robbers, bandits, thieves, and all those that unjustly appropriate the goods of others. Such are slanderers and those that curse others. Such are the sly, the crooked, the guileful, deceivers and hypocrites. Such are sorcerers and those that call on them. Such are evildoers. All such love neither the law of God nor God himself. They love themselves and their own appetites, but not God or his holy law. 2. A manifest sign of love for God is a heartfelt gladness in God. For we rejoice in what we love. Likewise, love of God cannot exist without joy, and whenever a man feels the sweetness of the love of God within his heart, he rejoices in God. For so sweet a virtue as love cannot be felt without joy. As honey sweetens our throat when we taste of it, so the love of God makes our heart glad when we taste and see that the Lord is good. Such joy in God is found in many places in Holy Scriptures and is portrayed most of all in the Holy Psalms. This joy is spiritual and heavenly and is a foretaste of the sweetness of eternal life. 3. The true lover of God disdains the world and all that is in the world and strives towards God, his most beloved. He counts honor, glory, riches, and all the comforts of this world which the sons of this age seek as nothing. For him only God, the uncreated and most beloved good, suffices. In him alone he finds perfect honor, glory, riches, and comfort. For him, God alone is the pearl without price, for the sake of which he holds everything else as little. Such a one desires nothing in heaven or on earth besides God. Such love is portrayed in the very words of the Psalter, For what have I in heaven? And besides thee, what have I desired upon earth? My heart and my flesh have failed, O God of my heart, and God is my portion forever. He uses food, drink, clothing, and everything else only as needful, and not for sensual pleasure. From this it follows that whoever loves the world does not love God. According to the witness of the Apostle, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Such are those that find pleasure only in the pride and pomp of this world, in rich homes, in rich carriages, in rich tables, in dressing in rich clothing, to be glorified and admired by all, and so on. Such people love the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which are all repugnant to God, but they do not love God. 4. The true lover of God keeps God ever in mind and his love toward us and his benefactions. We see this even in human love, 
for we often remember the one we love. So whoever loves God remembers him, thinks of him, and finds consolation in him, and is enwrapped in him. For wherever his treasure is, there his heart is also. To him the priceless and most beloved treasury is God. Therefore his heart also holds itself inseparably before him. Whence it is that he also remembers his holy name often and with love. For the heart filled with the love of God reveals outward signs of love. From this we see that those who forget God do not love him. For forgetfulness is a manifest sign of no love for God. The lover can never forget his beloved. 5. One who loves desires never to be separated from the one he loves. Many Christians desire to be with Christ the Lord when he is glorified, but they do not wish to be with him in dishonor and reproach, nor to carry their cross. They entreat him that they may come into his kingdom, but they do not wish to suffer in the world, and thereby they show that their heart is not right, and that they do not truly love God. And to tell the truth, they love themselves more than Christ. For this reason the Lord says, He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. A true friend is known in misfortune. He is our true friend, and one who loves us does not forsake us in misfortune. Likewise, the true lover of Christ is he who abides with Christ in this world and cleaves to him in his heart and uncomplainingly endures the cross with him and desires to be with him inseparably in the age to come. Such a one says unto Christ, It is good for me to cleave unto God. 6. A sign of the love of God is love for neighbor. He who truly loves God also loves his neighbor. He who loves the lover loves what is loved by him. The source of love for neighbor is love for God, but the love of God is known from love for neighbor. Hence, it is apparent that he who does not love his neighbor does not love God either. As the apostle teaches, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. These are the signs of love for God hidden in the heart of man. Dear Christians, let us repent and turn away from the vanity of the world and cleanse our hearts with repentance and contrition, that the love of God may abide in us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Why should we love God? God is the supreme good from whom every good thing flows, and all blessing that is and ever shall be. Without God, all blessedness is cursedness, and woe, life is death, joy and sweetness are bitterness. To live with God is happiness in misfortune, riches in poverty, glory in dishonor, and consolation in sorrow. Without God there cannot be true repose, peace, and consolation. Therefore, love Him as your supreme good and blessedness. Love Him above every creature, above father and mother, above wife and children, and above your own self. Cleave to Him alone in your heart, and above all, desire Him alone, because He is your eternal good and blessedness, without whom there is neither life or blessedness in this age or the next. Every creature of God is good, but their Creator is incomparably better. Love, then, and desire that good as it is existent, without beginning, without end, ever existent, and without change from whom all creatures are created good.